Welcome back. We're in week two of Kill the Coronas Virus Competition. We're in the streamer week. Uh, we've already shot one. We were trying to shoot three, but it's just taking too long to get them done, so we're probably going to end up doing two a week. But I decided to do something I've never done, and I'm pulling out a fly that I've never had uh, produced nationally or anything. This is, and people, you know, they always give me stuff about saying it's my favorite fly. This fly, I've never, very few people have seen it. I put it in the book in the natural, or the original version, it's called the Nappy. It's, uh, but this is my, for sure, my favorite bait as far as sculpting and sucker fly I've ever done. Uh, I kind of was just keeping it, because it's just one of them things. It's just, it's just such a, it's just a money. This this is the best sucker and sculpting pattern I've ever seen. It just when you see this thing wet, it's it's just it'll blow your mind. Really simple. I'm going to show you two or three versions of it. We're only going to tie one. I've probably kicked Johnny's butt with this fly more than any fly I've got combined. So that could mean I've done it once, but it just still it means something. But <clears throat> I'm going to show you. It, this is. I talk a lot about layering, and this is the first fly I ever layered. I've, I've had this fly since, I think it was the second year I moved out here, so almost 20 years now. And in the original version, I'm going to show you several versions because they, it's morphed into so many things. I started out as a sculpting pattern, and I, I'm pretty sure in the book I showed the original version where I did the... Uh, it's got variegated chenille for a body and then but it still had this top but it was that it was a really small version I'm going to show you the big ones because uh, they're they're easier to see one and I've just I, I, but the original version was on a small B10S front hook it had a very short shank front hook and about a 3x long back so the whole the whole sculpin's like this long because your average sculpin, your modeled and slimy sculpin, are usually two and a half, three inches long. And this one was in that two, two and a half world. And man, it it, it is just unbelievable. If you're if if you swing, this is a phenomenal swing pattern. And when you see this thing, I mean, it doesn't matter how you fish it, it'll it'll hunt. But when you see this thing wet and you see how this wool layers and when you're looking at this thing it'll blow your mind it, it'll be it is so lifelike looking it, it's it's hard to describe till you actually see one especially when you see it when we tie it because it really looks kind of doesn't really look that good <laughs> it just but it is it's unbelievable when you see it and so i've got a bunch of versions sitting up here even some i've never fished like this one's the bearded nappy uh this one's got uh, deceiver tails on it. I don't know this. Uh, I don't, I'm just screwing around. And so it's, it, and it may be, I don't know. I was looking at a creature bait and bass fishing. And I was looking at this. And so, but there's a bunch of them. This is one from the white. For the last three years, this overall on the white system, I think this has been my, if things weren't just on a total suicide bite, this has been my top bite. I mean, it's been my top when I, I just things are when I'm struggling, I put this on and I've just it's just been incredible. And so the the version that I'm going to do is the one that I started doing quite a few years ago with the with the uh, the lighter belly. This is uh, and I can't remember we we we've been fighting because trying to figure out which one was which. Uh, two years ago, Jeremy and I were down on the white, and I had one that I think was like this color. I don't remember. It just lit it up, man. We were struggling, and man, it put it on, and just it was just one after another on this thing, and it was a big one. And this was, I thought this was the same one. The body, uh, this is Bruiser. Is, it, is this Bruiser? Or is it uh, uh, Semi Seal? Semi Seal. And I thought that was the one. I, I logged this one onto a tree and finally broke it off uh, the back hook. But the one that I used this year because I lost that one halfway through was this one here in this color for, with this body. And I've switched over, and I'm going to show you how to do it, but I've switched over to a different style. 
And I want you to think, when you look at these flies, I want you to, when you pick them out, when you start designing it and making your own, I want you to think about the shape of a sucker. Because we're coming into spring, and your black striped suckers, a lot of your suckers, your red horse, a lot of the suckers are coming up to spawn, right? All over the country. It's not just here. The east, they're super thick. And suckers and bullheads of that, you know, even juvenile suckers, massive food source for trout. All year, every year. Lakes, I don't care. If you fish in it, I mean, you go up onto Quake Lake or you go into Torch Lake in Michigan or if you go to, I, I don't know, you go out to California, they've all got suckers and chubs in them, right? This is the most accurate, when you look down this thing's face, I'm going to show it to the close-up camera in a second, but when you look at this, the design of this fly and how it holds shape, when this thing is in the water, it very little changes, right? It, it very little, it compresses slightly. All this water is going to get in between each one of these fibers, and we're going to layer every one. And you're going to see the most incredible mottled looking fly you've ever seen in your life. And it's going to have, it's, it's, its shape is both directions, it's both lateral and horizontal. So it's carrying that shape, which is producing a footprint, a sound footprint to that fish. It's, it's pushing a sound wave to that, you know, that, that hertz wavelength. And so it's got a lot of push to noise as far as the fish feeling it in their lateral line. It's articulated like most of the flies, but the key is really when you look at it, it's its shapes. This thing is just absolutely, doesn't change shape when it gets wet. It's not like a lot of flies where you tie and you got a deceiver tail, well, from the top, there's nothing to it. And, you know, it's just this, and the fish is looking up at the fly, right? And so this is the newer version where there is no body, it's all wool. This one's kind of been, we've been playing with it for quite a while, but you know, just mess around, but it's just the same thing. It's stacked wool, but there's nothing in it but thread body. And so this yellow, and because you frequently see a hint of yellow, and when you look at suckers, you'll see it, it's got a little bit of yellow, a little bit of orange in it frequently, and you can, you can put that in there. You can, I've done these where I put orange right here in the belly for, when you see a, a red horse sucker in the juvies, and they got those really orange fins, it's simply just throw an orange, you know, layer right here. Boom, you've got that fin from the bottom. Your trout are looking at this fly from the bottom up. They're coming up to ambush this thing. And so, again, you can do, I guarantee you, one of you is going to change this and make it just, you'll figure something different out. I've been, I've been doing these two styles, I mean, for uh, some more for that. I do it in white. I do it for white fish. I do it all kinds of stuff. For your burbot, you know, when you've got a lot of uh, burbot in your, like we fish the big hole a lot, and the big hole's got a ton of burbot, always got a little bit of yellow in them. This one's, uh, this one's got the yellow and the tan and the brown. When you start modeling these colors, there's somebody out there that's super artistic. I guarantee you, you're going to put this thing together. It's going to be freak show when you get done with it. Same thing on this one. I just use a small strip, and when you, when you put in your wool, it's going to... It's going to mat down just a little bit. But what I was looking for on this is I was looking for a belly when it comes down. When you look at a sucker's belly, it's got this, you know, it's, it's got a little reflection to it, but it's very distinct where the color comes down and it's broad and it goes right down to a point, right? You're, you can do that with this stuff. You can, you, you can do all kinds of stuff with it. And, it, and I, again, the bodies, I'm going to do the frizzle chenille on this one. But the bodies, like I said, I've done it with um, anything you can think of and doing the top layer part of that fly. And the last version I'm going to show you because we're seeing a lot of this as of late is once the people are starting to get hip to jig hooks. And so what this one is, is it's upside down. So the same thing except the hooks in the top, right? Back hook on this one's down. I was doing it for, you know, up and down. I do all the rest of them, I have double hook up. And it was so I could literally, you can plop this down and drag shallows with it. You run a, you run a jig, and if you don't want that back hook, cut it off. They're going to eat that thing's head, I don't care. You could have a single jig hook right there, be done with this thing. And you can drag this thing over rock piles, over log jams, it's unbelievable. Remember, sculpin don't have a, an advanced swim bladder, so they stay pretty close to the bottom. Suckers have very, they're everywhere. And especially we have the juvenile suckers are running everywhere, right? And so this jig style, somebody will perfect this better than I did where they can, you'll get it. So it's virtually weedless. It'll be great for bass. Bass love scope and love bullheads. So on we go. 
And uh, the rubber leg thing here, that's kind of a new, I showed that one already. I don't, uh, this still, that one's untested. If somebody, you know, in a month, two months from now, somebody's going to write me and say, you know, you didn't have that right. And I always started with these lines. I've got one that's even worse than that. It's got a little flapper tail in the back. Uh, it's not the one I don't know where it went to. But I put about twice as many rubber legs in it. I was watching a bass show and they were fishing creature flies and I thought, well, I'll do one just like that. So anyway, a lot of talk about that, but I'm pretty excited to show you this because again, I have never, other than Johnny and Jeremy, uh, I, I'm not sure I've shown anybody this fly. I think maybe way back when I might've tied it in the really small version at a show once for Ray Schmidt, I think, back, man, 15, 20 years ago. But it, it, again, I put it in the book, you'll see the original version and it's not that, but I want you to see how broad this is and we get done and how easy it is to shape this to anything you want. You could shape this to any style. If you use the white and you, and you blend your colors, you can make a rainbow. It's just for this particular pattern, I kept it with these colors, these dull colors, because when I look at a sucker minnow or I look at a sculpin, to me, it's, it's pretty dull. They're not... They're not like a rainbow or something or a whitefish. There's all that reflection. And so you'll, you'll be able to figure that out on your synthetics and when you change things up. So, and I have confidence that some Gunner Bramer, or Andy Sabota will take this thing and fly and it'll be like, it'll really kick once they get done with it. But we're going to do the old man style. So on this thing, uh, again, the first one, and I was talking to Jeremy today. I can't remember the original. Johnny probably does. I'm pretty sure it was on a 2460 rear hook, six, uh, four or six rear hook, and I think an eight B10S front, I think. I don't, I don't remember, but it, really short head, two stacks, and then the back was where all the swim was. That thing was money, and just crushed it. And then, but this one I'm going to do the bigger version because it's so cool and fun to look at. So I'm going to have a 20, or a 20, I'm going to have a, Number one, uh, 7052 on the back, excuse me, back here. And then I'm going to put a 2 aught. This is a 1 aught on the back. And then I'm going to have a, a 2 aught 7050 on the front. I think I just threw the 50 on the ground. But you get the idea. So we're going to have that vertical eye in the back. The, the tail is going to be on this one is going to be cream. And then it's going to have some uh, olive brown, sculpin olive, whatever. I'm not really too worried about this. I just try to keep this, the top tail to blend the color of the, the wool we're going to do. All right. And then it's going to have a little bit of flash in there. I, I don't think I put flash in it in the old day. I think that's new. I think I put that later. If you forget that, I don't think uh, this is one where I think it might not be a problem. The body is going to be, and again, I, I've done this body. Original one for sure was cream, medium, chenille period. End of discussion. Then I went to the variegated stuff. Uh, I don't ever think that made it better. Then we went into the synthetics and we went to this, and this one has, in particular, has really shined for me. I still do the other ones and I still dub some of them. I mean, it's, this is totally up to you. As of late, I'm almost exclusively on this wool stuff. Uh, for the belly, it's super fast, super easy. But this is Cactus Chenille was the first one I did. I don't know if this was the color, uh, but the, the one as of late has been frizzle chenille and this bonefish tan. And I'm doing two different sizes. I've been a little one in the back and the bigger one, the, the five eighths in the front and the three eighths in the back. And so that's the body 0.46. I don't use the lighter wire on this one. I use a spec. Well, if you're into the small sizes, this would be right on the edge. I'm going to do a little bit bigger than this. You could put the 0.38. I use the 0.46 on this. This fly right here is one of the first ones I've ever broke. I was using, I was hooked up on a tree in the back branch. And I, I mean, I pulled on this. I did not want to, it was my last one. And I broke it in half. That's one of the first ones I ever broke. And I think it was on the 0.38. So I'm 0.46 from now on. On the sculpin wool, um, and I'm gonna go over that just a little bit. You know, you got ram's wool and, and the same thing. There's sculpin wool, which is what I'll be tying on. Is this? It's stranded. It comes in way more colors. You can do the the UV stuff. This is from Spirit River. 
This is great. I use this a ton. I use it all my belly. The difference is, and I'm just going to show you real quickly, and I'm sure you all know this, but Rams wool, and, and this is Rams wool. It's just, it's stranded. But when you look at this, this is kind of hair, and it's starting to get, like in here, there's a lot more of the hair and a lot less of the fuzz. This one is what I would consider sheep's wool, ram's wool. It's the same thing as sheep. And so, but this, you, you, it's really hard to get all of it like this. I get, you know, I get tons of it in the shop. I just dig through and pick the best one I can get. But if you don't always get the option, sometimes you'll get 20, 30 of these at a time and every one of them's like this. When you go into this sculpin wool, you're gonna buy a bag of this. It's the best value in the world. Every one of them stranded, every, it's all perfect. Every, and I've got every color of this. I, I pretty much got addicted to this stuff. And the wool, I, I've loved I've, you've, a lot of my flies. I mean, uh, all the butt, you know, Bob's fly, the butt monkey, that's not my fly. Bob Lindsman's fly, but I want Scott Smith, both of them. Uh, that, that's a wool head, my sumps. And there's a lot of them that were wool. And then back in the day, the whole TNA series, all of those started wool. And some of them I blended over to uh, Senyo stuff, but uh, but for the most part, I still this one because I'm looking for that that duller look to the fly. I use the the natural because I'm not looking for a lot of shine on this thing because I don't think they have much. So onward. This is a pretty quick fly. Um, pretty quick fly. We're gonna have the two tone. Um, on the tail, I already did that. <clears throat> so we're going to start with this one aught. Kick that coffee cup. Kick the coffee cup. How about drink the coffee cup? Drink it all. Oh, uh, 100 GSP, clear 100. And I'm going to do, I'm going to wrap the body, and then I'm going to show you when I get to the front. I'm going to show you how to use the the wool belly. It's 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 no different than everything else we're going to do, but it, I mean no difference as far as how we layer it. <clears throat> We're in the middle of this virus thing. It's spring here. It's 57 degrees, right? And I have allergies like crazy in the spring. You want to see something funny? You ought to sneeze right now. I suppose it's not funny. I think it's kind of funny because everybody, we all live here together and we all run from each other when I sneeze because I have seasonable allergies. So here we go. We're going to start right here. We're going to leave ourselves now. You're never going to have a sample, but it's just, here's one right here. So I've got this, I'm going to just, you're not going to be able to see it. It's all going to get layered up, but still practice your craft, you know, come in here and just uh, get everything right. I mentioned this, and I, I'm going to mention this right now. I just got a text. Somebody asked me what style of scissor I use. I use the stitchers. This, uh, I don't sell them. I probably should, but. I don't sell them, but it's, everybody asks me, you know, what my scissors are. And the other thing they ask me is if I really hold my vice like or my bobbin. I don't hold it like that. I do it because this camera back here, you can't see if I, I kind of grab a hold of it and hold it with my. I hold my bobbin with my ring finger here and here most of the time, and then I just that's where I would normally hold it. I just I'm getting that question a lot the last couple of days. All right. So I want a nice, clean, I just grabbed a couple of these off of the, give me one that's really clean. Nice, clean cream. If you can't get it with one, get put two on there. All right. This is kind of, this is a little kick, you know, it really, when you see this thing wet, when you see how it undulates and it just design, gets that stuff, You'll still see this tail back there kicking. It's really cool. I still make it the same way it's going to be. I'm going to layer over this, but I want this tail to be the same length as the body. So I'm going to tie in one, two, three. You got your pinch wrap, your set, your anchor, and then I'm going to come forward on this. And when you do this with the when you do this with the wool, it becomes a little bit more pronounced. And so I bring this on the side. I'm not too worried about it here. I, I usually go all the way to the front just because it helps build my taper from the bottom. The more important on the wool one than it is with this frizzle chenille. Kind of, it might be a little bit wasted time. 
I didn't mention, I think I did mention that the, on this, on this particular fly, I used very little uh, flash. And so, and this isn't even the flash I normally use. I just grabbed one. I don't really care. It just, uh, usually I use ho holographic flash -a -boo. What's this one? I forget I what it's no called. Idea. That's that one that we got, a sample of it. It's just kind of dull. It's not real. But I don't, I don't want a lot of flash in here. I'm just going to put a little in. Not much at all. And if you want to skip it, skip it. Because it, it, it's, I, I, don't, I don't think I did it on the first ones. And I put that in and I was going to layer that back. And I'm just saying that, and I, I'm not going to put all that in there. It just it offends me a little bit. I don't like the, it's just more than should be in this particular fly. That's plenty. Okay, so now the scope and olive. You can use brown. A lot of mine, I use flat brown marabou on the top of these. Um, I had one in here. I know that this one right here, the original, that had brown. This was layered for three colors. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm just kind of getting it close to this scope and olive. I'm gonna use on the top. But this isn't really, this is, we're going to put that right on top. And it's going to have wool coming over top of it. Uh, just up the back side. We're just building a little taper to this. When you build these tapers, and I, I mention that a lot, make sure that they aren't loose. You're not, you're, you're cinching down. You've got to, you, you shouldn't be able to move this stuff around. If, if that's bothering you, and, it, and especially in the beginning, if you use a lot of it, kind of cut it in layers as you go up and you can still practice it. But if there's too much bulk in there and you've noticed I have very little, I don't tend to have much in there as far as like I would never tie in. And I've seen this when I'm doing seminars and people are tying with me and they'll tie this in and they'll put that whole bulk in there. I never do that. It's always just barely it's whatever's left not there not much other than stem so i'm not getting a lot of buildup out of this but again when i do this style when it's just the thread underneath there it helps build a little bit of the bulk so here comes the trick to the to the fly this is the cream we're going to do that when we get no, let me forget to do that i will okay well we're not quite there got to get the 3 8 chenille you're going to pull this out and we're going to do this in thirds. This is going to be three layers right here. Just like always, if you're working with a stranded chenille, come in here and only tie in the, <clears throat> only tie in the, the strands, pull the other stuff out. And then it, there's no way to sample, but you can look at this one and, you know, I'll spread it out a little bit so you can see. You're just kind of looking for thirds. We're going to build these gaps into it, right? So you can see, I don't think you can see from that side, I pulled it apart so you can see there. You can see that we're going to go one, two, three, each layer is going to go over. So just look at it. So here's my first turn, just like always. Check the back side, hold your tail, give it a nice tight tug. One, two, three, about four turns right there. And we're going to be about to the third point. And we're going to have this on the back side because we need to just like Anytime when you're going to not cut that off, it, we don't want to fight it. We want it back here. I should build something that makes it hold back there. All right. Now, this is the key. Now, this is, is you, I keep pinging this thing up. I'm beating the heck out of it. When, it. when you look at it, it's layered and it's also tapered, right? But we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna achieve the taper a lot with the scissors, but we don't want to have this be as thick as this one so obviously we're going to taper them and there's just practice just this is whatever you know there's no way to say do this much or that much just grab it on the bottom and, you know the a little bit down here and you just kind of look at it and think okay that's a lot less material than up here right i mean we're going to get pretty heavy on the top and this is what i love about this wool you can strand it out and it stays stranded you know, come in, cut. You can work with little pieces. I, I tend to work with about the same amount. 
on the back side it's going to be like an inch and a half on each piece roughly and like i do all my stacking and everything else you know it's just like it's just no different than how you stack anything i tend to you know thin it out in the back for the one that's going here but i can it's always got to go halfway over right so i'm going to take the die i've got them right on top of each other black on your tan on black sorry about that dog went running uh i got the darker not black the dark on the bottom you're going to fold this over your over your thread just like that so you can see it and that camera you can see i get that half moon shape i can come in here and i i set it and that's really important that you set this one right right now that it's a half moon that it goes across and what you want you have the the darker on the bottom and then when you layer it over it's going to be on the top so we're going to come in here and pull it and i want to put a nice tight turn right on that and then don't relax it and just move forward take a look at this thing you got lots of time to change right now just pick it out just a little bit and see that it's going about half to a third way down the tail on the back material on the back side that way when I do my first turn it's nice and clean I'm not rolling my materials over it started back here I get a half a turn I hold the body I give it a pull one two three four about four that one took four open it up materials on the back side repeat those of you that don't like to listen to me talk too much now you can fast forward because we're going to repeat this over and over so make sure that you pull when you cut off the base make sure that you you, you strand that out i don't care if you you can do it the bodkin you can do it like this you can do it however you want but get the don't i'll show you don't have these ends right here still in there get that gone because when you go and you start picking it you're gonna it'll pull more material than you want when you start trying to clean this up back to you again inch inch and a half probably inch and a half would be better if you when you, especially when you first start doing these and all i'm doing is i just just slightly more than i did on the last one just a little bit more a little bit more a little bit more just three you know just keep them going forward <clears throat> and each one of these when i put this in and and by the way when if you wanted to if you're worried about this and I, I don't I don't do it on mine. I do on I do it on the one with the wool belly. If you want to put just a, a hint, hint, because you don't want this to absorb up into the wool, just a hint of glue right there to to make just so you're not just worried it's going to fall out. You can put a hint. Don't put much more than that. Just just enough so it barely gets wet, but you don't want it to absorb up the up the fly, up the uh, wool. So when I lay this in here, same thing, the dark is down. So I, I come over top, the dark is down. Make your half moon, come in and set it. But I want you to look at something before you go on. Just get used to doing this. You don't want this bottom one right here. I don't want it much more than just starting to touch that one. And then the top one's going to layer over top of it. So give it one, two wraps, come forward. Now lay this back over it and go right over top of that. Just catch it just enough so it's nice and tight. Move forward. All right. And you can see how the layers are going. The first one, the bottom one, is just about to here. So it's just maybe just barely touching over this. And then this one, the top, when you layer it over, goes halfway down the next one. That's what's going to give you that incredible model look in the water. Okay move forward wasn't sure about that nice hold it nice tight stretch two three four we're done <clears throat> a couple tight turns right there now take your material cut it off a little bit long so that you can get a hold of those strands and nothing more just come in and catch those strands so that you know that's super secure now i'm going to show you how i do this one right now because i really dig this belly style and I, i'm just going to show you all i would have done is instead of doing the body 
I would have simply, each one I've used a really little tiny amount because when I did this, the, first of all, the wool's gonna encapsulate it on the sides and I used the yellow thread because there's a little bit of yellow reflection in those things. But it's the same thing. I would just come in and I would wrap this wool just like we're doing the top and we just cut it off. So that's our body. And so there's no, there is no body when I do this style right here. And it's the same thing. You just keep layering it and you'll see that that little bit of yellow shines through. This one is all synthetic sh frizzle chenille. Where am I here? So one more. And you got to make sure that you have enough material that these are long enough. Just break that off. Don't. That's those those fibers, and they've they've got to be. They've got to be broke loose, so they don't. They just they'll pull out too much material. There you are. As you layer these. And this one's slightly bigger and you can have it right in your hand like this and you can just look at it and see You know, you just look over top of it and you'll know and so if you want to layer these so that the the kind of Stranded ends or the pointy ends of the hair just make sure it's forward And so when you fold it back, it'll be over top of you're gonna cut 90% of that off anyway but make sure that you have the dark side down and I, what I do is I kind of, I get it in my hand here and I'm stranding it around and I just basically look about where that's going to be right now and I grab it with my thread, come over, there's your half moon. And the thing about that half moon when you set, and if you, if you were doing this with something else other than wool, when you set that, you could set it over here if you want to do, I'll do that at the front for the pectoral fins, you can set it off to the side. I kind of screwed around there, screwed that up. Played too long on that one. So, dark side down, get it. Give me a, get over there, right to the front, and just look and make sure it's where you want it. Good. Open it up, do a couple turns forward, and what you're doing there is you're you need a tie down zone, right? So I'm, I'm just, and I chatted a little bit too much right there and that's long. You can just, you can trim it right now. So I've got two really tight turns, three maybe, here coming forward. And what that's doing is giving me a spot where I can, it's nice and tight and I can come right over top of it. Just like that. If you, if you have a little bump right there, don't worry about it. If you want to fill it in, great. But that's going to keep, that's really securing your wool down. I'm not, you could, you can just come in here and you can build up and come and cover it up if you want to. Just to make it look good. But I don't, I, on mine, if you look at, if you look at these, I don't do it. I may have done on that one. Usually I've got a little bump there on the head. And I just, like here, I leave that little bump right there. It's totally secure. I don't, it's just... It just really doesn't hurt anything. It's hard to, you, when you pull it over it, you're going to have this lump right there. If you want to sit and build it up, go ahead and do it. Usually I just leave it showing. Okay. <clears throat> now we're going to, just before you go on, just take your bodkin, take a peek at everything. We're going to get this thing kind of picked out, get it all nappy and hanging out there. And you'll get used to it. I'm kind of going quick, but you're going to get used to, like you might really like it more of the, the, the tan and less of the modeled. Maybe you want it to look spotty or whatever. You can do, you can do whatever. Jeremy, you grab me, left my beads over there in the, underneath that, underneath the Renzetti box. Grab me a gold one. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Thanks, man. I just grabbed a three millimeter gold eye. So I put the, uh, I was looking for my wire that we had. Wax your thread. I said this in the video we did earlier. I forgot about, I've waxed thread 
for my first 40 years of tie, and then I kind of got away from it with the wet and the new threads, and I started working with this GSP, and then I was struggling with it. I don't know how, because I watched so many David McFeel videos, and he's always waxing the thread. <clears throat> and finally, Kurt Getches calls me up and says, why don't you try waxing your thread, dummy? It's amazing. It, uh, it just locks it onto your hook. So we're going to take about a six inch uh, piece of this. Use more than you need. So whenever you do this, if you want to figure out how to do it, we've got to wrap this back around. We've got to go halfway down this hook and we've got to come back here. So I'm going to come halfway there and then back to there. So split it. You're going to end up with a six, seven inch piece of this stuff. More is better. Don't if you waste a little bit, it's so much easier to work with more than it is to, if you're if you're worried about wasting this much of this material, you probably should. Uh, I don't know. It'll, it'll make it easier for you. I'm going to put a little drop of glue on this uh, crazy glue. I just did a video. Usually that would have been lacquer, but I left my lacquer jar open and it's like thick as honey right now. <laughs> And I tried one a minute ago when we were filming, and it was pretty ugly because I had glue everywhere except where I wanted it. When you do that with Zappa Gap, if you just take something, don't use your fingers or put it on your pants or whatever. But if you do that, make sure that it's it's set before you do this because it'll it'll get on there. It'll make it for a little while. It'll it'll wear off, but it'll it'll make the articulation kind of sticky for a while. I'm going to do a single bead on this, gold bead, whatever you like, pearl. And this is that, you know, the, the vertical eye hook, so we're going to come right orientation straight over the top of the hook. But before we do that, we have to put our eyes in. One, two, three, <clears throat> flip it over like this, and that's where we're going to worry about it. Now, you have to decide, you know, what's going to be right for you. We're going to have one stack in the front. Now, obviously not this one, but we're going to have that. So I need to have room so I can roll this back. So leave yourself, you know, a, a good quarter of an inch. And it, depending on where you want the orientation of the eyes or the, the head, you know, the further back you put it, the less dive you'll get out of the hook. The further it is forward, the more dive you'll get. Uh, it's so woolly, it's so, so furry that you're not going to get that much. This fly rides really level. It's, it's just there's too, much, there's too much water absorption all around all of that stuff, you know, that it just kind of, it just stays level, which is a good thing. So just put a handful of turns around there, pull that until it's, First touches, and you've got to still got a bead width or so behind here. We want it to move. With these bigger beads, you can pull it just a little tighter. That, that's beautiful. You can see that I've got lots of movement in my articulation. I drop down. I'm at my gouge. Now, nice tight wraps going forward. It's not super critical on this because you're going back through. Take both wires. Go through the eye of the hook. Come forward, and this is what we secure our eyes with. Take your thumbnail, stick it into there, really, so you bend. And all you're doing when I do that, I say it all the time, you just don't want that to be, if, you, if you're really slack and you just barely pull it back, and all of a sudden you look in here, on, the, on a two odd, it's not going to happen, but you don't have a size one, and you look in there, and there's no place left to put your uh, tippet. That makes things really hard. So now I'm coming back, and you can see, I'll keep my bobbin out of the way. I'm going as close to those eyes. You can see right there. I've went as far as I can. Now I'm going to come on the back side and I grab. Can I turn that so you can see this, Jeremy? I just rotated that. I can turn. Oh, okay, like this. Yeah, smart kid. Good to have smart people. All right. So you come in here and then you pull right there. Did that show up? Yep. I can't see it. I can barely see it. So I'm pulling that. So what I'm doing is just grabbing the eyes from the bottom. And so I just pulled it this way, give it a couple, get them really tight right there, move back, keeping that under the bottom, grab Johnny's scissors and cut the wire off at the halfway mark, roughly. 
I've probably done that. And now I come back here, I'm, I rushed right up to here, and I'm going under the hook, one, two, three, four, and I just pull, just really tight. I'm going under the hook and around the eyes, and what I'm doing is I'm simply tightening that wire around the eyes. And so it's not, it's not like just, they're not hanging there. I mean, these things are locked in. You want to take a hit of glue right now and hit it? Great, go ahead. Not going to change much. You're either going to stick or they're not. You either did it right or not. So now we're going to jump to the next size frizzle chenille. I said this in a video the other day. If you have room to take this somewhere uh, and anywhere where you can hang it, if you hang it over a peg, like be, wherever, you, wherever your room is, anywhere you can, if you can hang this, it'll loosen up and it'll, all, it'll kind of fill out. It won't have flat spots on it. Just it, It's a little nicer to work with if you do that. So, tie you in. This one I do a little different because I like to have one. I'm just going to get a little turn right here, right, to cover this. I'm going to do one or two turns right there. I don't want to go too far forward. It's just too much. It's two, it's two turns would be plenty. And, whoa, hit my tip of that wire. I can't believe I got away with that. Hit the hook with my thread and didn't break it. And so this one, on the wool ones, I got a cover with the regular one. Where'd he go? Like this. I don't have I don't have as much to cover, so I try to get a little bit to go over that. Didn't quite do it. Uh, if you wanted to, you could put a little bit of wool down there just to make it blend over. I'll be it'll be all right. It'll it'll be just fine. Where'd that wool go? On the wool ones where we do that, then you just, there wouldn't be this, and lay right into the body. They don't seem to mind that gap. But you can fill it however, you can fill it with a little bit of this if you wanted to. So, and this is the other downside to working with naturals, is that <clears throat> you can run really short on the length of this wool, whereas with this stuff, you cannot. But you should be fine on this one. It's going to be right on the edge when we get to the front. Rather, we have enough length on this to, to fold it way back over top. And again, this is one where I, each one gets progressively wider. Just splay this out in your hand before you... You can run it through your comb if you want, or you can just open it up. This first one, uh, we're going to have three more here too, so. Dark side down. Now we got to cover, this is where I was saying we got to cover over that. And as long as, if you've got a, when you've got this bigger gap here, because this is a big one, when you make sure that that dark comes into this very well, so from the up, you'll still, they'll still, you won't see this, this uh, gap down there. If you know what I mean, because from the the bottom side, the visual, I'll show you as soon as I put this on. So when when you're looking up at it, it's gonna be that's gonna be covering that gap there. So one, two nice turns, take the dark, pull it back. That's laying right over top. When that gets wet, you'll never see that. I like to have two turns on that bump right there if I can get it. Just just, it, it has a tendency to want to slide off there, like it just did to me twice. It's get, all right, you win. I'm going to give you that one. It's tight. So now take your, come here, take your frizzle chenille, hold it, nice stretch right there on that one, and just move forward. Keep, don't go over top of that. Three, I think that's, I did one kind of tight one right there. Four. By the way, if you wanted to wait this, you could. I, I, I don't. It, it's I use sinking lines all the time, so it doesn't really. Not all the time, but 99% of the time. Same thing. Now remember, these all got to get. 
the, this one should be slightly bigger than this, and the next two will almost be about the same size, just because it's we're going to pick it out and trim it and. <clears throat> Now we're about to use, and I just, I stranded this one out to about a popsicle width stick. It's popsicle stick width, like that. And so as I get forward, especially on the last one, you'll see that one's gonna be almost all dark because their heads, a lot of them you'll see they got a pretty dark top to their head. Don't worry about one being different length than the other. So all that has to do is go right there you out of the way and again this is just personal preference how you how you lay this as far as the modeling now but when you put that in make sure that goes a halfway around the body make sure that we're stranded out before you go through your two turns forward just make sure that it's when you like this one's a little tight I'm going to strand that out just a little bit like this. So when I tighten that down, I want it to go halfway around that hook. I do not want, I don't want to have a gap, but, but you can pull this once it's done and you'll see when we, when we get done. But I want this to be on the sides. I want it to come all the way around to the, to the belly. One right over that hump, hold it, pull down, nice tight one right in front of it. Okay, getting close, folks. Get over there where you belong. Get on the back side. Give me you. I love this. The funnest thing about this fly is what we're about to do on the haircut. You really get to, it just comes to life. It'll, when you first see the thing, you're like, oh my God, what is wrong with that guy? And you start trimming, man, and it just, it's like deer hair work. You just, that final gets really cool looking. The last one's the, this isn't the last one. We put the last one right at the nose. Slightly thick. And, re and remember, when you're doing this, it, if you don't have to, even if it was way too, if you got too much material, if you got too much material on, the, the biggest fault that's going to be with that is that you're going to have trouble keeping the material in if it's not super tight, if you didn't glue it. And so, but you can always, if you have too much, you can just go in and clip it. You, you can just sit and pull on this stuff. It, it, you don't have to worry about having too much. Too little maybe, but not too much. See that's this is stranded already. I'm gonna break that apart. I didn't I did it on the last one. I'm just breaking it apart so it's a little bit square. You know, so it's the same width when I put this in. <clears throat> I'm on it the other direction now. Right there, dark side down, do your half moon, you lay it right where you want it, right behind that eye. Right there, spread that apart. Give it a couple nice tight turns right there. Make sure it's blended. That's gonna be hard. I got a little bit of buildup right there. Having trouble getting a hold of it. Gotcha. Now we're coming forward to the end. <clears throat> Picking this out real quick right here, because I do one more step right here. Now I'm going to take this dark one. You can do this in one, it's hard to do it if you do it in one step, it's hard to do this. And you can use, if you want to right here, you can use um, a different color. I've done that, I've used that, um, what's the color of that? It's like a chocolate brown almost. Um, it's rough. I can't remember what the color of it is. Wool. It might be rough. And you blend these two. You'll see in a second. Nice and spread this. Get this really wide. 
So it's nice and loose and no big gobs anywhere. <clears throat> Come back here. Got ahead of myself. Now we're going to take this one, spread it out, and really widen that one out. You don't have to double this if you don't want to. You'll see when we finish this, you can, you'll get, you'll get this really distinct, if you make that one longer, You'll get this really distinct pectoral shape right there, or fins right on the side. You just double, just give that one a little bit, the second, you know, just a little bit extra right there. Now, come around the eyes. Got one in there, that's enough. Backside. Tie this off. I just did a little figure eight around the eyes just so I could see that the I just wanted to have a little fuzz down here. That's all I did. I don't even know what I, where I'm at right there. Okay. Same thing. Strip that out of there. Always clean that up. Now we're going to have, this is the final one up front. And this is one where I say, sometimes I'll do this. Just depends on my mood. It, sometimes I'll do this one where it's, almost all the black, or not black, the dark, I keep saying black, the, just the darker side of it. Because a lot of times when you look at these things, they've got a really, their foreheads, especially on the, the, the suckers, they, they tend to have a really dark side. Sometimes their heads are pretty light, but they get a little darker around the eyes and all that stuff. And so, I don't know, just to me, it just looks a little cooler to have a little bit more dark on that one. But again, that's the beauty of it. You get, to, you get to make it however you want. I've got a really good, I got a really good pectoral side there, so that'll stick out and give me that, give me that uh, brown look I'm looking for. This one I'm gonna take right to the eye, right, you know, I, I want this one to be kind of short. I don't want it laying over into this one as much. So maybe eighth quarter inch into that. I want this one to lay back a long ways. Fold it, come in. Yeah, I, I keep doing that kind of fast, so you can see, I'm showing you what I'm gonna do right now. So I've got it in there, halfway up, and this is those turns that I'm, I'm trying to flatten those, and I really crank on these, because I gotta lay that back over, and I'm gonna get that little bump right there. But I really think that's important that you get that right there. I really think that's important because if you just lay it over and maybe it lightens up a little bit, it's never going to come out when you've got that bump right there. And that's right there's how I do mine. I leave that little tiny nose out the front just like that because it's, I just know when I do that, I know that thing's not coming out, right? It's just, it's done. So now we started back here and we picked, I picked this out a little bit in advance right here. This one. Now we're going to start on this one. Just, there should be the one on the side right here by the eyes should be the fullest and darkest. And we're just trying to get this off to the side. The more you pick this, the, it'll just keep growing. So it doesn't grow in your hands? Not true. Look, it does. All right. <laughs> Somebody caught that. All right. Getting it nice and picky. So from the bottom, you can see this one's a little bit thicker over here. I'm going to have this brown. And we're just, just keep, just pick, pick, pick. You can't, just, just as much as you can, get it nice and loose. Because we'll work from here. Everything's going to be layered up. That should look pretty disgusting right now. It always cracks me up when I'm here. But what you should be seeing right now is a very distinct, uh, from this one, I'm sure you can, from this camera, you can see what you're about to see. You can see this layered effect. And you can see how when this thing gets wet, 
they're all going to start and that water gets between them it'll look so it's, you'll see <laughs> it's really cool and so and here i made this one a little short on the on the pectorals so that one's not going to pick out as much now it's just now it's just go time now you just this is when you get to start playing i come down i i start mine from the sides how you do that doesn't it doesn't really matter i just go down the sides and i can you can see i just did a very very quick i'm, I'm just getting a shape i'm just and i look keep looking at it and if there's one that's not picked out as much as the other i go in and i pick it out as i go and just okay every time you do that you just come in and you start shaping this thing and then you come over the top you know you you've got an idea what these things look like you know you can and they're gonna they're gonna collapse a little bit you know when they get wet so i'm gonna just come down and just keep playing with the shape as you go just keep doing that and then eventually i just take and I'm, i've got a lot of trimming to do yet so I just take this thing and I just start looking at it and it's easier for me to put it in my hand and just look over the top of it, see if that's going to cover up nice. And then as you stroke these all back and you get these fibers going back onto themselves, you'll start, when you push your hand over that, like that, that's going to be, when you push that down like that hard, not gripping it, I'm just pushing it down. That's your final shape. When that water gets between this thing, it's not going to, because it was all puffy, right? And I, and I got a hold of the, the material and I started going like, just pushing my hand down the materials. And that's about where your shape's going to end. It's, it's not going to be, you know, it, you, about like that. You push your hand into it and that's about where your shape is. So you can see I'm way too thick right there. Come in here. And you just keep, the more you trim, obviously the smaller the fly will get, but <clears throat> it'll, you'll, you'll carry less water in there. So the, if you go too thin, it doesn't give that movement like this is. You want this stuff to be longer like that when you're, before you push on it. So when it's like this, all that water is going to go between those fibers and it'll start to undulate and it'll start to look lifelike. It look like it's, you know, it's actually like scales and movement looks. It just, it's going around. It's not a stationary body. And it just starts taking in that material or that water and boom, you got yourself a fly. So I'm looking down over the top of it. I was a little short on this, this connection right here on this, uh, that wool. Not gonna cut that anymore just because when I look at it from the bottom, or from the top, I mean, it's it's not quite. I, I wish I'd left a little bit more to just cover that that connection up just a little bit. Not not a big deal. So go back in, pick it out. You can play with this. You're gonna do the first couple of these. I guarantee you. You will over trim it. It'll get you'll get too far down. But leave it, leave it as picky as you can. Look from the top. This one's got way more on this side than it does on the other so I'm just going to trim that down push it down and away you go that is the first this is the nappy it's in the it's in the new book but not as this version it's in the absolute first kind of I had to tie that one to, and I couldn't remember how to tie the one in the book I had to tie it to put in the book it, it looked kind of crappy because I couldn't remember how to do it exactly but there you go you can see this thing when you get it and you just keep you just keep playing with the shapes in you and then you know like this with your hand and you'll just see where you're going to end up this one's got a it's still got a little bit of time left on the trim out but you'll be able to see when you and i actually trimmed this this uh the pectorals a little bit too much right there but Overall, you'll see the whole effect of the fly. <clears throat> if you have, if you live anywhere where there's suckers, bullheads, or sculpin, I guarantee you this thing's going to light it up for you. And there's really no way to fish it wrong. You can fish it on the swing. You can fish it 
You can fish it, strip in it really quick. You can dead drift it. It doesn't really matter. It's just got everything you need. You look at this thing from the bottom and you can see, I'm going to turn it over. Where, is that too soon for you? A little bit. Yeah, refocus. You can see from the bottom, it's not going to stay that thick. It's going to, it's going to sculpt an ish down. It'll, it'll go to that taper. All these layers from the bottom looking up, all those colors when we had it all picked out, that'll lay down. And when you look at it, it's three dimensional. This thing is like, it's three dimensional. You're going to dig it. All right. So this is week two of the, the competition, the kill the coronavirus competition. Remember we had, we did the first one. You, you still, you'll see this one. You still got time to do the terrestrial too. Uh, we said no synthetics. Well, people got a little crazy on that one. You can use synthetic dubbing. You can use gel spun thread. What we were getting at is don't sculpt me a uh, foam by, we said no foam, no synthetics. And what we meant were like parts of grasshoppers and stuff, because that's a terrestrial one. On, the, on this particular uh, end of it, on the streamer, no rules, go for it. And, you know, do whatever you want. And you'll see, you know, whatever we come up with, we judge them. Whoever wins the category gets a $250 gift certificate to the shop. We take the however many it takes. It could be two, three more. We could go on for a month. We don't know. As long as we're in lockdown, we're going to keep doing the competition, coming up with it. We're hoping it's only three, just because we want the thing to end. But if it takes another three weeks or month, we're going to keep going. Each category wins the $250. The grand prize when we get all done is going to be the uh, Sage Maverick or Renzetti 1000 series of your choice. So that's the nappy. Hope you like it. Stay safe out there. We're wishing the best for all of you. Send us in your stuff. You have two weeks after. So when the first terrestrial one came out last Monday or, or this Monday, I think, or Tuesday, you have two weeks to submit your flies. We judge them. We go. Then this next category will start. You do not have to be in every category. You can be in one category. You can make one fly and just, just a terrestrial and win the whole thing. It doesn't matter. But you have to win that one. The final we do with the Instagram and then we'll judge them also. And so it's, it's really fun. We're getting a, just a jillion people writing in. It's so cool. Great to hear from everybody. And again, hope everybody's healthy. Hope you liked it. Hope it helps you out.